Jesse's mind is blown about a player's choice or lack thereof of equipment. Well, Edina's Anthony Walsh helps us highlight a unique summer showcase in Richfield. As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Jim Beam, Better Edge, Royal Credit Union, and Peak Vestibular Center. This is season three, episode 130. Marcus Felino Fan Club Assemble! Not only is SodaStick.com the only place to get your official Marcus Felino Fan Club tee, but it's also the only place to get all your favorite wild team garb, plus so much more beyond hockey. Use code BARDOWNBEAUTIES for 15% off your total purchase at SodaStick.com. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition, like chanting Let's Play Hockey prior to the start of each game, or playing the State of Hockey Anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Remember, drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, copyright 2021. James B. Beam Distilling Company in corporate Claremont, Kentucky. From New Voice Studios. Oh yeah, you betcha. Let's go to the boat. Discombobulate on the spot. Part of the Talk North Podcast Network. <laughs> Fly out to Russia personally. <laughs> Jesse Pierce. This is off the rails. We're only <laughs> Already. a couple minutes in. Alexis Pearson. We're not going to throw batteries on on the ice at, you know, Kuro Kaprizov. This is, we're not that crazy. <laughs> like... <laughs> Bar Down Beauty's podcast. Was it about guys getting hammered down low night after night? Uh It's like everyone loves to crap on analytics, but the analytics do not lie here. We are firing Fred at the top of the hour. More hit. It's like tea. (laughs) Tea. Starts now. Hello, everybody. What's going on? I'm Jesse Pierce. She's Alexis Pearson. Joining us now, Anthony Walsh, too. Anthony, what's going on, buddy? Uh, how are you? Like I said uh, earlier off air, you're our first, I think you're our first Edina guy. I don't know that we've had an Edina guy or gal on yet, Alexis. It, it might not be the first if we're, if we're misremembering somebody, but it could possibly be the best, uh, depending on yes. what kind of information you provide our listeners and viewers with today, Anthony. So you've got a chance to shine here and we're excited to, to have you on and talk some hockey. The bar is very high. I look forward to <laughs> either hitting it or coming up short. So we'll see. I was going to say no pressure, right? No pressure. I mean, you didn't necessarily hit the bar on your breakaway goal against Hill Murray in 2013 for state championship. Let's go back to that time again, 2013 Edina Hornets winning the state title. What was that moment like for you? Was it kind of that culmination of your hockey career all in that moment? Absolutely. Um, So, you know, me and the guys had worked so hard for that moment and um, we had spent the entire season and nine of them actually, um, though the seniors that I had played with, I had played with them since I had been about five years old. So um, ultimately, yeah, it was just the most incredible experience and um, the culmination to something you had worked up to, you know, your entire life. And um, ultimately, uh, it was the best experience that I I personally had in that moment and, um, you know, being being able to share with those guys that I'd known my entire life. So um, not everybody can obviously get to that moment, but um, if you, if you have, I can, you know, speak for them as well, that it's something that you can't really put in the words, but that you never forget. I heard what? that five hole is your go-to on a breakaway. Did I read that somewhere that that was always your go-to? <laughs> You're giving away all the secrets, yeah. Jesse. <laughs> and I actually, that did hit the post, by the way. So I went to the post and went in. Oh, like, okay. <laughs> there we go. There we go. But, so I did, I did hit the bar, um, but <laughs> bar and in. So I'm really happy about that. Yeah. Five hole. I had, I had every single day, um, you know, my goalie, Willie Benjamin was awesome and spent 30 minutes after practice with all of us working on our breakout, our breakaway moves and um, would not have been confident to have my mind go blank in that moment <laughs> um, and just let muscle memory take place. And, uh, you know, put the puck five hole there. So shout out to Willie. Shout out to <laughs> all the goaltenders that I uh, had uh, scored on before <laughs> using that move. So thank you for letting me uh, <laughs> put the moves on you. <laughs> you know, you mentioned something really important that when we talk to high school hockey players in Minnesota, most of them will mention at one point or another. And that's the fact that you won the state championship with people you had been playing with your whole life. And that's something that makes Minnesota hockey so unique is that you do get that opportunity. You don't have to go far to play with good players and on good teams. Um, how important was that to you? Because like you mentioned, you know, winning it is exciting in itself but to do it with people that you've been around, you've become friends with, become family with over all these years, that's gotta be something even extra special within itself. A hundred percent. 
beginning of every year, you know, you say they make it to March, make it to the tournament. And with a team like Edina, um, we traditionally have been a good team and people mm-hmm. know that Edina hockey is good. So uh, for, us, right. always, <laughs> for us, it was always, you know, we wanted to make it, but we wanted to win. Yeah. So um, my sophomore year, uh, we had a heartbreaking loss to an absolutely wonderful Duluth East team. They had a lot of great players. They ended up going on to have a crushing overtime defeat to Eden Prairie that year, which had Kyle Rao and Nick Sealer and all these incredible players who have um, gone on to make really big names for themselves. And then um, my junior year, um, we lost to Benilde, and um, <laughs> that one still hurts a little bit. <laughs> but um, um, Because really talking about it as well, we had guys um, – that we had played with growing up and everything that ended up going there and everything. So that was really cool. And we know we had, that was an interesting experience to have that. So then senior year, right. Mm-hmm. Last ride, um, we weren't going to drop that. So, you know, to, to make that and to go through with that makes a lot of sense. So you talked to a lot of people that I talked to a guy the other day and they came in, you know, I'm probably going to see this. So I'm sorry. I'm saying this, <laughs> came in second and still remembers coming in second. And, stuff. and it's like, yeah. so, you know, I, I feel like, um, the hard work, you know, watching film every single day. And my dad, uh, like filmed, you know, the games in the corner and like, we'd come home and we'd watch that. And, um, I'd go to display back with like Billy Hengen and a couple of other people. So I put a lot of time into, um, making my game into what people then saw it, you know, Mm -hmm. in the state tournament. Um, I had had, I'd been snake bitten the year before, um, as far as like getting points and all that. So it was really nice to have that hard work, um, be on display for people to be able to see and then in such a big game with the championship and then to do it with the people that I had grown up with um was the absolute icing on that cake right I mean you added another kind of star to your your uh accolades here I guess if you will um last weekend in Richfield at the summer showcase the AAA summer showcase you guys had an all black team. What was that like to see on the ice? I mean, I imagine, I don't know how many black players you played with growing up. We're well aware here in Minnesota, diversity needs to come quite a great distance, but what was that moment like last weekend to be a part of this Panthers team? That was uh, an all black hockey team. Yeah, it was something that you wait for your entire life and then you don't know if it's going to happen. And then when it does, you're kind of like, Oh my God, this is happening. (laughs) And it went so much better than even I had, you know, thought or planned it was going to go. I didn't necessarily know. So I had um, gotten roped in about a week and a half before the tournament. They still needed an assistant coach. And when I heard everything they were about, I was like, Oh my God, right. Like how, how amazing is this? So getting a chance to then be a part of that was kind of like just offhand. And so that was an incredible experience. And then, I get there and the guys show up and, you know, these are some, they're, they're boys, but they were, they were huge, right? I mean, all these guys <laughs> are like massive, you know, massive young men. So that was really cool then as well. So we're like, okay, we have a squad, right? Like, you know, that was awesome. And um, we come together for practice on Thursday and, you know, got everybody there and to have that team on the ice at that point to see everybody, um, you know, young black men on the ice was something that, you know, we, we had arrived, you know, that was kind of something that, you could really feel, you know, we had, nobody gives it to you, you have to take it. And we came together and brought this team together. Um, These black hockey moms from California, you know, had this idea, they can, and then conceptualize it all together. So to just be in that rink with those guys um, was nothing short of a miracle and um, was just so exciting. So, you know, watching them grow as young men and as hockey players, our record was one, two, and one. um, And we came in, not expecting anything so like I mean the fact that we played competitively for all of the games we you know had a bigger gap in the score on the last game than we had wanted but Mm -hmm. um I don't think that the score really reflected how they played so I was really proud of these young men and for you know persevering through the hardship and um just get having that chance yeah there's was nothing more important to me than to be on that bench with those guys to have their backs during that situation and they were players comprised of like six different states, right? I mean, these guys came from everywhere to be a part of the team. How did the team form? I think I read that uh, two moms actually came up with this idea. And I'm sure, like you said, you jumped at the chance when the opportunity came to uh, to be on the bench with these young men. Yeah, Rochelle Papian and April Scott are two hockey moms from the Bay Area in California. And they have sons that played on our team. They were U8, U18 sons. And just before they were... I'm going to be done with their hockey experience. They were kind of like, hey, we want to have 
a chance to maybe have a full black team for our kids to play on to have that experience to and then minnesota right being hockey mm-hmm. mecca um yeah. espn i think in 2020 um had buddy dina actually as a hockey universe of the world and obviously that's in minnesota all that kind of stuff so they wanted to come here to play you know the best um or you know what's perceived to be the best um so yeah having that them they come together um it was kind of bootstrapped uh there was no sponsors no this no that um got the team together and we got here. Meredith Lang um, is pretty well known around the hockey community in Minnesota. She helped them get ice, helped them um, with lodging and all that. And then once that had been secured, I I spoken with Meredith about another situation and she was like, Oh, I have this team coming into town and they need an assistant coach and you should totally um, be on the bench with them. So then Rochelle reached out to me and that rest was kind of history from there. Um, But yeah, never in a million years, if you ask me like a month ago, would I be sitting here with you talking about this incredible team that I just coached? Um, I would not have, uh, I would have believed you at the time. So, right. Right. <laughs> so, you know, you played hockey, you now got a chance to coach hockey. Are you a hockey watcher? Do you tune into any of the leagues? Do you have a favorite team? What's your go-to move? Are you following along with the Stanley cup playoffs and who's going to win the Stanley cup this year? Yeah. So I am a current law student. Um, I'm a three L so I have, spent most of my time studying but <laughs> currently I am watching the playoffs okay. I am an Avs fan I was okay. like it's funny I was asked about this when I was like way way young <laughs> and this is by Doug Woo like back in the day and I was like oh I'm an avalanche fan he's like wrong answer you know <laughs> like, don't tell so, people that <laughs> <laughs> so ultimately um yeah I'm pulling for the Avs I think Nazem Kadri has had a really great story as well yeah. um being a Lebanese man with people uh giving him death threats and telling him he doesn't belong in in the game and then shows out and you know has a crazy natural hat trick and and all these kind of things and then Nathan McKinnon um (laughs) I played against him back in the day (laughs) look at you no shout that to the world (laughs) yeah he was a oh man that kid can play hockey um yeah and he could back in the day too we 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 played against him and we, we, we knew who he was right away. So <laughs> him being the captain in the show does not surprise me. So yeah, I, I, I watch when I can, and I'm a big fan of, of the abs right now. And I think that I want them to, to take it all. So Sam Coast has had too many rings now. So, <laughs> you know, so what fair. made you, what made you an avalanche fan? Because, you know, you and I are about the same age. Uh, so they won a cup when we were kids. Um, did you just pick a team that was playing well? Did you, you know, did you pick them? Cause you played against Nathan McKinnon. When did you, when did this fandom start? Yeah, that's the funny story. So my brother, Benjamin, um, we've always had, like, he, he, I started playing hockey because my brother, Benjamin, started playing hockey. And um, a quick story there is, like, the Dino Mikes were a, a, a team in the Minneapolis. They were getting an award. We have not actually been a part of that program, but we were a part of Park Avenue United Methodist Church at the time and saw them getting an award. My brother said, I want to play hockey. And he was about eight years old at the time and I was three years old he's five years older than me so I started skating immediately when he did um from there so yeah then moving forward um he always liked the Red Wings okay and um my dad was from Detroit but um and I don't know if that was but he liked the Red Wings and um so as you're saying we were younger around the same age they were the Red Wings and the Avalanche had a crazy rivalry at that uh-huh. time like crazy rivalry you had like Patrick Waugh you had um like uh probert on the red wings you know always having these bench clearing brawls and it was the most exciting time to watch hockey honestly it was so fun so naturally my brother liked the red wings and so i think i gravitated towards the avalanche and that was kind of the <laughs> classic thing. brothers classic yeah. brothers and then, yeah, they wanted and uh, i met dan Hynote actually okay in, in elk river when he brought yeah. the cup back and everything so that was really cool got a picture with that and everything so yeah i've been an abs fan really since then and um you know, ultimately, I think the expansion teams are really cool too. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like bringing hockey to Vegas and to Seattle, and but yeah, ultimately, that's been um, that rivalry with my brother. <laughs> that's that a started, great story. Started me thinking of like, okay, yeah. he likes the Red Wings, I like the Avalanche. <laughs> Sounds uh, about right. Have you seen the preview for the ESPN? Um, I can't remember if it's an ESPN 360 or if it's an ESPN. It's the it's about that rivalry. The trailer, have you seen? Dude, it is so good. Like even just the trailer and it's just basically about that time and it shows all the fights and it's got all the big players talking about it. Like, yeah, I hate the wings. I still hate them to this day (laughs) and I still hate the abs and I'm just like, oh, I'll have to send it to you. It's, it's such, I think it comes out this summer sometime in August, but uh, 
it's a pretty good one. Speaking of things coming out this summer, you have a book in between being a law student in between coaching these teams, you are author of a children's book hockey is for everyone, which is released on July 15th. Uh, tell us a little bit about the process of that. Was it kind of a no brainer? I mean, it's almost like not a biography, but it kind of <laughs> is right. It sounds like it's the journey of a young Anthony, uh, in hockey a little bit. That's yeah. Well, I'll start with that. I suppose it is kind of a interesting, like biography autobiography like roped in with a children's book like historical fiction because um it's this all happened um 100 and then i putting the stories in succession and making them in a way that i think children could really understand that so this all kind of started when the pandemic happened and things slowed down and then quite frank um you know george floyd being be murdered um brought a lot of attention to minnesota mm-hmm. and then a lot of it and what is minnesota known for right we're known for hockey people were kind of wondering why like the wild hadn't made a statement or why you know some of these people had made a statement and then you start to see stuff on social media and some people i was hanging out with and who really didn't understand a little bit and i felt like that being for me dinah and um having been on a state championship team and played youth hockey my entire life in Minnesota. I've known a lot of people. I'm well known in the community that um, I had a chance to maybe um, change minds, right? Or like, you know, get a chance to um, make the the world and the sport more inclusive. Um, So I kind of sat down and I just, um, you know, I attribute to God a little bit, right? Like not to, but like it really just sat down and it just started flowing out of my fingertips and I started typing and the things that had happened to me throughout the sport kind of came back and, you know, um, thought about what about this story? What about that story? What about the learning lessons here and there? And then in the movie South Pacific, um, there is, um, it's about just like World War II movie and, um, but a woman marries a man or wants to marry a man who has a mixed race child. And like the whole story is about her coming to terms with that she was from the South. And uh, um, so there's a line that like, you have to teach these kids uh, to not hate before they're six, seven or eight who their relatives hate. And I was kind of like, huh, like, you know, so uh, how do we change the next generation to be more inclusive? Because, you know, we are stuck in our ways for the most part and we can change and, and that's okay. Right. Ultimately I'm okay with something like that, but um, but the next generation is how we're going to really create that change. So like to get a children's book in the hands of some of these kids and um, especially players of color, I did not have that opportunity growing up and mm-hmm. that was fine, but it would have been really great in a world where representation matters to be able to pick up a hockey book and be like, oh my God, like mm-hmm. I'm the main character, right? Like, <laughs> so cool. So um, at one point, you know, there's this quote and I do have it in the author's note, um, but just that, you know, be who you needed when you were younger. Yeah. And I took that very seriously. And I think that that would have done, you know, wonders for me to have that when I was younger. I think it'll do wonders for kids now, um, BIPOC kids, non-BIPOC kids, everybody. The book is mm-hmm. literally for everybody. Hockey's for everybody. And that, you know, this is a sense that um, this is a beautiful team sport that I have taken so many lessons from, met so many people, friends, and this is something that everybody should feel safe. Mm-hmm. in and want to participate in if that is indeed what they want to do they shouldn't be dissuaded because oh I really want to play hockey mm-hmm. but I'm scared about getting called names or something like mm-hmm. that 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 really scares me and puts me off because of how great the sport is and how I know it's so great right. but that uh, how I also know that there are families and groups of people that don't feel like they belong on the ice so mm-hmm. I want to I want that gone. I want people to know that this is for everybody. You belong on the ice. I belong on the ice. We all belong on the ice. Right. And so how important has it been? I mean, it really did. You saw a major turning point almost after George Floyd's murder, right? That people maybe did start to recognize there are serious faults in the system and hockey hasn't been inclusionary. And we're still seeing it today with Kadri, like you had mentioned earlier, but how important is it uh, to have the Hockey Diversity Alliance and to have Matt Dumba kind of being at the forefront, especially here in Minnesota, where, as you've said, it really isn't as diverse as it could be, but you still need to make this sport and, and the world a, a better place for everybody. How important is it to have role models like Dumbs and uh, and others out there uh, fighting the good fight as well? Yeah, very important. And, um, you know, like Dumba, Anthony Duclair, um, Akielu has a book coming out actually in September. That's a graphic novel. That is his story, which is incredible. And like, um, I think there is almost a new genre kind of like, <laughs> coming about now which is incredible and we really need this um 
so yeah, I think, yeah, I think having those people out there um, doing that, the HDA is incredible. I applaud their um, sincerity that, you know, they split from the NHL because the NHL they believed was not um, putting their money where their mouth was, I guess, you know, maybe that's not the right, correct way to say it, but just, you know, yeah. So that was really courageous to do that, I think. And um, so, yeah, I, I respect, you know, these guys that are doing this work at, and then they're professional athletes. And so they have all that other baggage and people, you know, like with Kaz, uh, Kadri, he's, tra- he's just trying to play the game of hockey. Mm-hmm. And I mean, he's a pest. Don't get us wrong, right? Yeah, like, right. He's, he's a pest. <laughs> exactly. like, I wouldn't want to play yeah. against him. Don't get me wrong. You know, like, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the idea that, you know, you can't just go out there and, right, yeah. and be a hockey player versus a brown hockey player or mm-hmm. like a Lebanese hockey player is, is, really i talked to one of my buddies who i'd I'd played with um and he has been a great help in helping me with all this kind of stuff and Mm -hmm. he was kind of saying that um you know on our hockey team right i was um the only uh, black person on our high school hockey team and but there was you know on the football team there was really only like one black on a football team on a black basketball team all that kind of stuff but it was never the black guy on the basketball team or the black guy on the football team and the black guy on the baseball team right but there was only singular people still, but it was not that. But for the hockey, it was all oh, the black guy on the hockey team. And we were kind of talking of like a litmus test on like how we're doing and how we know where things are going. We'll be eventually, mm-hmm. we'll be having people on the ice of all colors, creeds, religions, um, you know, and they will just be hockey players on the mm-hmm. ice. And that's kind of like, you know, what me and him have kind of talked about a bit is like this future that we see where it's just, you're playing hockey. Um, yeah. So that makes awesome. sense yeah I like it well that's I remember Jordan Greenway telling me that too when we had a story about him being the first black Olympian uh hockey player and he was like I just want to be a hockey player I don't want to be this first ever anything you know and it is and it's it's remarkable to consider that because it is it should be you're just you're playing hockey like everybody else <laughs> right like there's no maybe better than some maybe <laughs> maybe less good than some who knows I mean me for instance bad very important question speaking of that as a hockey player this is a, this has been bugging me all week, Anthony. Do you wear socks with your skates or do you not wear socks with your skates? Ooh, yikes! So like, <laughs> <laughs> yikes is right. Yeah, yeah. That's oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I I was a back and forth kind of guy. Oh my so gosh! Like, okay. I, yeah, I I started off barefoot. Um, for a while I was wearing socks. Um, on barefoot again. I I and like I ended my career wearing yeah. socks. Um, okay. You know I don't. <laughs> Don't don't blame don't. don't kill is it me the right socks here. fault? It's the socks fault. That's what you're saying. Like wearing socks. Oh right. Your career. Yeah. What's yeah. the method to the madness? Why did you go between <laughs> the two options? Did did one like feel more comfortable? Did one was it a superstitious thing? What did you? Why did you go between the two? I was definitely a superstitious actor, <laughs> but um, <laughs> the socks were more about like comfortability, I suppose. Um, you know, sometimes if they weren't on right, you'd spend just time like shifting it around in your boot, yeah. and then um. You know, just having like that control, you can kind of like feel when you're not wearing the socks, like your toes are on the, the footbed of the, you know, you're, you're turning on a dime, all that kind of okay. stuff, right? Like you, so you know. wild to me. I just learned this. I had no yeah. idea. I've been around hockey my entire life and I, and I never played. So this is probably why, but I was like, you mean you don't wear socks. And even my husband who had played, he's like, oh, that's a thing. Like there are certain guys that don't wear them. I'm like, what? And I'm like, why are people not offended by this? What's <laughs> happening? Like, yeah, J- they- Jesse and I were texting about this last night and she was like, you're offended by this, right? I'm like, absolutely. This is disgusting. Why do people, they, uh, hockey skates already smell enough. Now we're putting bare feet into them. Like this it's is just disturbing. So, well, cause you don't do it in basketball. You don't do it in soccer. You don't do it. Like they're all, everybody's wearing socks. Hockey <laughs> like, what? It's the, easily the smelliest players. And I just, I just can't, I can't wrap my head around it. It's pretty, it's crazy to me. Yeah, I don't know if I want to smell Ovechkin's feet. I, 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 <laughs> Do you think he's I, Bobby Orr is a barefoot hot was a barefoot hockey player? Yeah. Like I was like, what? What is happening? Crazy. Yeah, that's all. And, yeah. I mean, Bobby Orr is you know one of the greats, so maybe, I know. maybe there's something to be. Maybe said that's about the key. That. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wore like socks and I'm done. So, yeah. I mean, the first thing. <laughs> First thing back at camp, I'm asking Kirill Kaprizov is like, do you wear socks? Like I'll yeah. learn how to say it in Russian and be like, dude, do you wear socks? Like, is that a thing? Like, I'm just so. Teach us your ways. Yes, yeah. exactly. I just had to get that Mr. off my Overtime. Chest. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, kind of final question then, Anthony, we'll let you get going here. But what do you think needs to be done? So having an all black hockey team isn't such a rarity really, or, ha- you know, again, 
going back to the diversity and inclusion and kind of the focus on making hockey for everyone, what are some next steps? I think there have been again, baby steps, but we're still not there yet. Right. What are some next things that you might be a part of, or that you'd love to see in order to make the game more inclusive for the, the next couple of generations here? In, yeah, absolutely. I think that the idea of an all black hockey team is an incredible thing and that we need that now because that is like, it's just shocking, right? It shocks the system. This is like changes happening, but ultimately like we were kind of saying, you just want to have people on a hockey team. Right. Um, so the idea of an all black hockey team is not necessarily inclusive, but it is inclusive because it's like, you're, you're trying to expand the game. So yeah, ultimately I do want to see teams that have players of all different, you know, religions, creeds, um, ethnicities, sexualities, all on a team and just playing hockey together. Um, how that will happen is I think zero tolerance policies and tournaments for one, um, you know, sanctioned and non-sanctioned. So if you're in a tournament and a kid gets called a name or something that's racist or um, xenophobic, homophobic, that usually is not handled properly. And then that kid will drop out of hockey potentially and then not want to play anymore. That family will then, you know, have a very negative experience that people can ask about and then go on and, and tell them that it's negative. So I would say like having policies in place that deal with these situations, like right away, remedy the situation so that families can feel comfortable then keeping their kid in the sport and then going off and having good word of mouth right. because you go in certain communities and like it's old, that's a, a rich person sport or that's a white person sport or that's a racist sport, right? There's all, you never hear, well, yeah, this is for me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So like having that change, I think the book that is coming out in July, um, my book coming out in July is really, really big. And that'll be super important just because um, it's gauged for three to nine, three to 12 year olds, right? This idea that you can get these kids to want to be the protagonist in the book, right? There's two protagonists, or the white protagonist or the black protagonist, right? Yeah. So it's like, you can be anybody in, in between, right? You know, all these kind of things. So that'll be the case, making it cool to want to stand up for your team and making it cool to like, um, to stand to you know uh, push back on racism, xenophobia, homophobia, um, and having that be the norm mm -hmm. will be something. You know, having more books come out. So like Alu Aki Alu's Alu Aki's um, book coming out is going to be incredible. So that's gauged to like nine to twelve, right? So like you yeah. have my book coming out three to nine, three to twelve. His book coming out nine to twelve, and then you know there's then older people as well I actually was at the library the other day and I saw William Ree um autobiography yeah. and I was like holy mm -hmm. crap so I mean that's, there's a whole genre being built now mm -hmm. that I think will ultimately really help as well because I mean that came out in 2020 we're having a book in 2022 2023 right all these kind of things eventually we'll have a whole series mm -hmm. for kids that can look like us that have played from the time that they were youth hockey players in a book to the time that they were professional hockey players in a book mm -hmm. which is something that will really push forward the ball with representation i believe and change the narrative outright and writ mm -hmm. large with hockey so that it is a sport for everybody that belongs um inclusive um making it so that you know everybody can feel safe playing the game mm -hmm. i love it july 15th that book comes out where can people buy it amazon barnes noble what are we looking at yeah so amazon barnes and noble and then strive publishing um on the website so strive publishing is a minneapolis based uh publishing house that i had gone through and in, in, in partnership with publishing my book so it'll be on that website there amazon um and Target. i believe we're gonna get into target as well so just Sweet. that's a little premature but just you know there's there's um there's so any like anywhere you can buy books. That's, <laughs> that's important. Answer. Yeah, that's <laughs> good. Where you can buy books, go buy books. Cut out, cut out, yeah. <laughs> anywhere you can buy books. It'll... <laughs> well, Anthony, thank you so much again for taking the time. I'm so proud of what you're doing. I think it's tremendous. Uh, congrats <laughs> to the Panthers for for making some waves here at the Summer so Showcase. Are they playing any games coming up? Are you guys continuing to keep that team together? Are there more games down the road? Yes. So there are more games down the road. If not this year, which we are trying to do, then mm -hmm. next year as well. And there's so much interest already been generated. So them, them doing that again, I'm so proud of these young men because yeah. they kind of put themselves in a line of fire and you like, maybe you wouldn't be surprised, but there are, there are so many 
families that have reached out that have been so grateful and have also then had a lot of interest in like, hey, how can we become a part of this? How can we help move this ball forward? So um, yeah, more and more stuff to come with the Panthers and uh, look forward to seeing them back in Minnesota. Awesome. Perfect. Well, again, that's Anthony Walsh. Thank you so much for joining us. You raised that Edina bar. I hate being <laughs> here. just a smidge less. Now <laughs> so congrats. We're going to take well, another. You. Yeah, we're going to take another quick break. We'll be right back. Okay. I want you to think of the first time you took a big hit on the ice. Maybe it was a men's adult league. Maybe you were slammed into the boards in a big game, or maybe you pulled a Jesse and just tripped over the blue line. Either way, it's happened. Boys hockey, girls hockey, it doesn't matter. We've all been there with our first big hits. And unfortunately, those hits can add up over time. Hockey players can end up with dizziness, headaches, and pain, and a large portion have even experienced concussion-like symptoms as a result. Thankfully, there's an answer. Dr. Tyler Stewart with Peak Vestibular Center specializes in the drug-free treatment of nagging concussion symptoms. Dr. Stewart formulated the 3A Brain Restoration Program, a comprehensive program to get to the root cause of your symptoms. He utilizes the latest technology and techniques to get you back on the path to your best life and back on the ice. If you're dealing with dizziness, headaches, or pain after taking one too many hits, contact Dr. Stewart for a complimentary consultation today. Go to dizzinesscare.com or call 715-690-2211 to schedule your complimentary consultation. We're back. Thanks again to Anthony doing some cool stuff. What an awesome dude. Uh, be sure to go check out his book on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, wherever books can be bought, as he said, <laughs> yeah. uh, released on July 15th. I do want to circle back before we get into up for debate <laughs> because I'm still, I'm so, I'm even more offended that less people are offended by yeah, the fact that yeah, hockey yeah. players don't wear socks. Fred apparently knew this. Fred just <laughs> drops that Chris Stewart is a sockless hockey player. I don't know why I'm so bothered by it. Like I'm bothered that I'm so bothered by it, but I think it's because I didn't know. And it seems to be like a common thing. Like Fred knew, you know, and Alexis and I didn't know. Yeah. Which yeah. Says a lot. That does say a lot. Fred, you need to tell us where you heard this because this it's is not like where I heard it. I was in the locker room, visually saw Chris Stewart take his skates off. Okay. I was and like, no oh, socks. There's no socks. Okay. And I was like, okay, maybe that's a thing. And I moved on with my life. So we've got a witness account. <laughs> so we can confirm it. We're well, like, why can't account. I move on? <laughs> like, I can't move on from it. Cause I need like, and I've been explained why, like some one person was like, again, 11,000 of you voted in this. Cause I triggered something. Yeah. Most of you are sock people, which like, as you I should be, imagined. I wasn't ever thinking like, you're not wearing Nike basketball socks. Like yeah, I yeah. understood that. Like I assumed everybody just wore like super thin tall socks in right. fact usually like a compression sock right it seemed what I've always kind of seen but I'm just so like a lot of people said it was either because like Bobby Orr had not done it and they loved Bobby Orr which blew my mind there that Bobby I bet Wayne Gretzky doesn't wear socks we'll ask him first thing I asked him when he comes on the pod <laughs> still is waiting wear socks. <laughs> I know still waiting okay but, like, here's it's why the boot forms like yes. the boot forms I guess but yes that's why you have to like break in hockey skates, kind of like, you know, any other like shoe, like tennis shoe or stuff like that. But yeah. the first thing I thought of when I saw your tweet, Jesse, like I just pictured, like, for those of you listening at home, have you ever worn a pair of tennis shoes with no socks on? I mean, After I do a while. Too. Okay. Like I've done that before, but which it's is not gross. And I'm told I'm a gross <laughs> exactly. human. Like, <laughs> I've done it before too. I don't like, sometimes I'm like, I don't want my socks showing. I don't want to wear those little, like no show socks. I'm just going to yeah. go no socks. But yeah. after a while, my feet sweat, it gets sinky down there. Stuff's getting stuck together to the shoe. Like my toes are all crushed. How can yeah. you play a whole hockey game? Not wearing socks. Like your feet are crushing up against like your boot. Like this, does it not hurt? I just, and I, was I don't told know. It's because you don't slide as much, but I'm like, I slide all the time in my po- my Pumas, my favorite Pumas. I've done too many sockless days with those yeah, bad boys. Yeah. Those, and are, I, those are some cute shoes. But they're stinky now. But that's the thing. Like, I, I, I'm i not against. I love bare feet. I hate wearing shoes, period. And I usually <laughs> hate wearing socks. So that's not a thing. But I'm just, I don't know. I need to move on with my life. Yeah. I will. I'll get through this. Just saying um, in the archives, I found a picture of Wayne Gretzky wearing socks in the locker nice. room. This okay, is the kind confirmed. of research just that saying, this is why yeah. we hired you. Quick so. Google image search. I found it. He wore socks. Okay. That's good. I'm still going to ask just to like verify <laughs> and confirm. We, we could be like, yeah, we already sources this, say, but <laughs> sources, <laughs> sources say that you wear Her socks producer Fred. <laughs> Cause I had somebody else too. Oh, like I went back and forth with somebody. I'm like, oh, so you're saying that elite players don't wear them. And then like the less elite do. So like, maybe if I start not wearing socks in my hockey skates, I'll be a better hockey player. Yeah, that we should try that out. That I don't translates. know if I want to try it, but you should let me know how that goes. <laughs> I think that translates. So okay. anyway, again, thank you all for contributing to my insanity this week. It did. It just it's 
it blew my mind. And I'm glad Alexis was as offended as I was. <laughs> yeah. Seth as well. Shout out to Seth, who actually brought it to my attention via Locked On San Jose, who found out Darcy Kemper probably doesn't wear socks. So that's not just, surprising, though. <laughs> it was a whole chain reaction here. I just yeah, they somebody said Jordan Greenway on the wild doesn't wear socks. I'm like that. It doesn't surprise that, me. Yeah, it checks out. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Alexis, this week's go to uh, debate. What is your go to move when your team gets eliminated from the playoffs? Do you cheer for your backup team? Do you jump on the bandwagon of the hottest team or do you just stop watching the playoffs? I mean, nobody stops watching the playoffs, (laughs) right? Well, okay. So here's why I was talking about this with the 10 K boys. I went on their uh, main podcast. It's a bit this week. And we were talking about just like the postseason grief that we go through as sports fans. And I feel like how I absorb hockey content after the hockey season is over for the wild is like the five stages of grief. Like for a <laughs> while, I'm just angry. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want anyone to ask my opinion about anything. Then I go through this phase where I convinced myself everything was fine. I still enjoyed the season. It's not the end of the world then I'm like okay I'm back I'm back on the wagon I'm gonna pick a new team to root for um and then I'll get bored for a little while and then I'll pick it back up once it gets towards the end of the playoffs so everyone knows my backup team is the Maple Leafs partly because they're an east coast team um or an east uh, eastern conference team so I don't That's feel guilty it. also Austin Matthews is the love of my life as- aside That's from it. my boyfriend love you <laughs> um and so <laughs> I have to root for them so I do cheer for them but unfortunately they're just like the wild and they're usually on the first round too so then I, that's where I hit my phase. Where I'm like, okay, I don't really want to watch for a little while. And then uh, <laughs> usually I'll just pick a, the hottest team to root for after that. Anybody who's not a rival of the wild. So now I'm rooting for Tampa Bay. Jesse, what's, what's your go-to move? Um, I'm less invested in it just in general, I yeah. guess. Like I, I also take the opportunity to like step away from hockey yes. just for like a smidge, right? Like I'm like, oh, I just, I need to decompress a little bit of it. Yeah. Um, you know, I, stuff goes on. I'm not as invested. I still like to watch it. Like there's been some, I mean, the playoffs, there is nothing like it, Yeah. but I definitely find myself, the longer I've worked in hockey, the less (laughs) that I'm like, okay, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Like I just, I need a little break, but um, obviously cup finals I'm all Mm -hmm. in. I don't even care who wins. I end up just cheering. I think even through the playoffs, just for like a good game. Like I don't have usually, cause usually the people I pick don't win anyway. So like, you know, whatever it's fun. I, like right now, I just want to see a good series between right. Tampa and Colorado. Like those are two of the best, the best, like, mm-hmm. let's go get me seven of that. Whoever wins wins. I mean, both teams have Minnesotans on it. You guys True. know, I cheer for my Minnesotans. So both yeah. teams, the cup's coming here. So whatever, you know, I'm sure Nico Sturm to, will even bring it here. So that I would love to see Nico Sturm win a cup. That would be pretty cool. Um, yeah. I was talking to the 10 K boys about just like the burnout of working in sports while also being a sports fan. And I'm like, people who don't work in sports don't understand this, but like you love the sport so much. That's why you work in sports. Like that's why we went into this career, but like being a sports fan while also working in the sport is a very like wild emotional roller coaster. that there is that burnout when the season is over. You're like, okay, I don't want to worry about anything. I don't want to talk about the sport. I don't want to watch anything. Like I just need a few days to myself. And I know Jesse, you feel the same way. And it's really hard to explain to people who don't work in this industry. Oh, my husband hates it. He's like, ever since you started working in hockey, we watch less hockey. It's like, <laughs> weird. Sorry. That's because that all we do for work is watch hockey. All we yeah. Do for work. Yeah. Like he had even asked the other night. He's like, I kind of would like to watch game one. I'm like, well, yeah, it's the cup finals, dude. Of course, I'm not going to say no to the cup final. Like, yeah. let's watch the cup final. Like, you've, we've got the boys even kind of into it a little okay. bit, only because we let them stay up a little bit later. They're like, yeah. well, I just want to watch the first period of hockey. And I'm Smart like, you boys. little sneak, you know why? <laughs> like, you don't really care about it. But similar, similar to Anthony's uh, sibling rivalry that we yep. just talked about, Caden deliberately picks the opposite team of Hudson. <laughs> He's like, well, I want the blue guys. Well, I want the white guys. Like, what? Yeah. He's like, well, I want the blue and the white guys. Like, they're both blue and white. This is during the Tampa, New York series. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, classic. Classic. Just a little, just a little something. Fred, you were shaking your head at uh, at our decision of, I don't even know what, what you were shaking your head at, but we noticed yeah, it. What do you disapprove of? Oh, You're giving no, us no. The, always, I'm the always dad shake. Disapproval of any team that's owned by Stan Kroenke. Oh, okay. Oh. So Fred's F- bringing his yeah, personal Blanche. beef into it. <laughs> that guy can go to hell. Wow. wow. Basket. He is a terrible individual. And if anybody knows about the St. Louis history that he has, he I can go. I feel off. like, I feel like you, uh, he's from Missouri, isn't he? He's, he, he married into the Walton family. Oh, oh thanks. So he's Walmart okay. money that he married into, but he owns the Denver he Nuggets. Owned, oh, he owned the Rams. Arsenal. He owns the Rams, <laughs> an avalanche, and the Denver Nuggets. 
And I really don't want that guy to win a Super Bowl and a Stanley Cup within the same year. See, okay, Fred's got some major that guy beef. Can just go to hell. You're like us with Norm Green. That's we can relate. Yeah, I, oh, we kind of get it. It is. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I I know people who were lost their jobs because of him moving the yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. Selfishly. So. Okay, T. So Fred is Team Bolts. Got it. <laughs> and Pat Maroon is on the Bolts. So. Oh I'll yeah. Always, I will always Saint root Louis for Pat Blue. Maroon. Lord yeah. knows he needs another ring. Pat Maroon. <laughs> he doesn't need another ring. Come on yeah, now. T T T. I like hope he has three. fun though. <laughs> I hope he has a great time. I hope <laughs> hope everybody out on the ice has a really fun time. Um, I almost I guess part of me wants the Avs to win because a I've always been told like I grew up cheering for your division or your conference right See, you're like, like my, dad, my dad that's what my well that's because that's what my dad always told me He's i like, am anti well, you cheer <laughs> you cheer for you know the people that are in your group you cheer for ours one yeah, of ours it makes your like, team look better because it's like oh we lost to a team was really good it's like well no but i don't want teams that we play regularly and hate to go on and win that doesn't sound fun I don't, I'm not like, I am anti-division cheering. I think it's, it should be illegal personally. And if you ask me, so that's again, I I just hope everybody has a good time out there. Uh, speaking of good times, you can have a good time with our friends over at better edge, B E T T R edge.com. They've got a new Stanley cup contest going on where you can win free money. Go do it. Go check it out. We've been tweeting it out. Um, it runs through obviously the rest of these finals. So be sure to go follow their rules and regulations in joining that. Also just place a bet on whatever you like. They've got sports galore, baseball, hockey, basketball is over now. So they don't have basketball anymore, they but don't have uh, NASCAR. We go did Steph. confirm that. No NASCAR. Go no Steph NASCAR. Curry though. No NASCAR. <laughs> yeah. Go Steph yes. Curry. Yeah. Go Steph Curry. Shout out to him. <laughs> proud of the Golden State Warriors. Um, also shout out to sodastick.com. Again, we will have some possible summer merch coming out very, very soon. Summer's here. Let's go, baby. Sodastick.com. Bar Down Be- Beauties will get you 15% off all purchases. Uh, also Royal Credit Union, less fee, more free. We love them. Jim Beam, cheers to you. Cheers to me. Peak Vestibular Center. Uh, Dr. Tyler Stewart joining us very, very soon uh, again. And thanks to all of you guys. Talk North as well. Shout out to them. Uh, exciting things in the works. We will be doing a live Bar Down Beauties podcast mm-hmm. from Seven Vines Winery. Uh, which is out in Delwood, Minnesota. We will be helping them release a new version of the Minnesotan, uh, the Minnesotan that they released earlier in the uh, in the year with proceeds donated to Youth Hockey Association. So that's very cool. This is a white wine, which is much more my style. <laughs> Love that they thought of me when they decided to release that. Um, <laughs> that's what they said. They yeah. didn't say that. But that'll be on June 29th at Hashtag 6 Wine Wednesday. Yeah, so June 29th, 6 p.m. Hope you guys can join us for some live show some delicious wine beautiful scenery outdoor Mm -hmm. setting yada yada and uh yeah that's gonna do it thanks everybody have a great rest of your day and week bye